Hi guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well wherever you are. Today's video is going to be something a bit fun, a little bit different to the normal kind of unboxings and hauls and things like that, but it is a cute little tag. So I saw I love this person so much on YouTube. She's called Teresa is Dead. She is amazing. I mean, she does swear quite a bit, so if you don't like swearing like um, videos, then maybe don't watch it, but she is so funny and I really, really love her videos. And she did a tag from another girl called Ali Glines, um, which is the makeup tag. So I thought I would also do it as well because I find tags really, really fun and it's a nice way to get to know people and things like that. So if you want to stay, join, join along, I don't know where I'm going with this little segue, um, then stay tuned because I'm going to do it now. Okay, so there is 21 questions. I will try and be as quick as possible so that you don't get a complete num bum when you do it. So the first question, I'm, using, I'm looking at my phone, so I do apologize, I'm gonna pop it here so that I, maybe I'm not looking down too much. So the first question is, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? And I'm trying to think right now, because I, I did do a big declutter of loads of my old Mac collections. I mean, I had one that was super, super old, but I think I do have some, which I can show you. Okay, so I found them. I would say possibly one of the oldest things I have in my makeup collection is this MAC uh, lip pencil. My friend got me this, uh, Chris, and this is the Pro uh, Process Magenta Chromographic Pencil. It's a multi-use pencil. I use it as a lip liner. Uh, I really probably shouldn't use a lip liner because I got this in 2011. I really, really, really do not recommend people keeping on to their makeup that long, but a lot of this makeup is really sentimental to me because I did used to collect MAC. Um, I should really replace these. These are the Mineralize um, eyeshadows. I've got Smutty Green. I mean, how way, look at that. Uh, I've got Blue Flame. And I've also got a now very dirty table, but I've also got Young Punk, which is my favorite. These are absolutely amazing. They are, are shimmery, but they're black at the same time. I'm still absolutely covered. Yeah, so they're super, super, super lovely. And whilst I know I should probably chuck them out, and I think I will probably chuck this out, there's something that I find really hard about letting go of this makeup just because it was at a time when I was really, really, really into collecting makeup. Um, I'm not too bad now. I mean, I do have a lot of makeup, but I am a little bit more sensible-ish when buying things, whereas I used to buy every single collection from MAC. Um, but like I say, I did declutter that last year and took loads of it to cover Gardens Mac to redeem it for some free makeup. But yeah, they are some of my oldest bits of makeup. My most recent purchase of makeup would actually be, you think I would be prepared to have all the stuff here since I did watch the video, but you know, no I'm not. Are these two palettes by Unicorn Cosmetics? And um, so I've got the Wicked Eyeshadow Palette and I've got the Totemic Palette. Um, and this is what they look like. That's them there. They've got the artwork is absolutely stunning. I cannot, this is beautiful. And then we've got the Wicked palette and that's it there. The the double shadows are giving me like Urban Decay vibes. Um, I'm still getting around to, like I've, I've used these a couple of times. I do think some of the shades, like the metallics are a little bit lackluster. Like even with like a spritz of fix plus and things like that, you still you, you don't get a lot. The mattes are fantastic though. I can't fault the mattes, but the shimmers are. I'll show you what I mean. They're just they don't have much. And then a swatch, much there in comparison to other metallic kind of shimmery shades that I've had from other palettes. What is the first makeup product you ever used? So, way back when, when I was a little tiny, tiny lass, I would say, I think lip balm is going to be the first makeup product I ever used. Um, and it reminds me, during the World Cup, when I was in primary school, I had a Lip Smackers Blueberry Lip Balm and it smells so good and you guys know what I'm like for eating things that I shouldn't eat but me and this girl I'm not gonna name her but me and this girl in my class we sat and we watched the um the the World Cup and we ate the entire lip balm because it tasted so good and the, the end of it actually got confiscated by the teacher 
because we were like just like putting it on the back of our hand and then we were like eating it but it tasted really really good really really sweet what is a makeup trend that you used to love but now you hate um i think it's like the really massively like the massive like um block brows like the instagram brows uh, I don't mind a little bit of fading at the front because obviously you don't want two big slugs but like the really like ombre brows they just look ridiculous and you do see sometimes it's still going around in town you like ooh when you see it. Uh, what is a makeup trend that you used to hate but now you love? Speaking of brows, soap brows, I bloody love soap brows. I haven't got them on today but I love really thick fluffy brows, oh my god obsessed. I think I spent so long doing my eyebrows so thin and arched and now I just love like boxy fluffy brows. My friend Hannah was definitely a leader in that trend of like the big wolf brows. Absolutely. What is your favourite step in your makeup routine? I would say, like, actually I think it is doing my eyebrows. There's a lot of eyebrow heavy stuff here but I like doing my eyebrows first um, whether it's just doing the soap part or actually just doing the brows because then I know where I am for doing my makeup um, so you know if I want to do like a pink eyebrow or anything like that I like doing the eyebrows first because it's it kind of starts the face off and I love then carving out the brow with like, a concealer like it's so satisfying so so satisfying what is a makeup product that you can't live without okay a makeup product that I can't live without I would probably say eyeshadow. I love eyeshadow so much. I mean, obviously, like having a base and covering like spots and things, and but I love eyeshadow. I would say like eyeshadows are my favourite thing. I have like a drawer full of pigments and single shadows. I have two drawers full with palettes. Like, give me all the eyeshadow, and and I got a box full of glitters. Like, I literally I just love eyeshadow so much, and the more colour, the better. What sparked your love for makeup? Now, I've said this a lot in makeup related job interviews, um, it's just, and it isn't like when I when I write this, this isn't a fib, but what sparked my interest in makeup was Sabrina's Secrets. Does anybody remember that magazine from like the 90s? But Sabrina's Secrets, um, for those who are so young, um, was a magazine about Sabrina the Teenage Witch, not the new series but the old one and it came with a purple sparkly box and each week you would get a makeup item along with a magazine that you could put into the box. So it had like roll on lip glosses that always leaked, it always leaked, they had glitter gels, hair mascaras, eyeshadows, kind of very I would say low quality but it doesn't matter and I just loved it, I loved it so much and I can't believe that I must have chucked out the box. I wish I could go back in time and keep it because that is such a, a big part of my um, love for makeup, definitely. There was something really magical about getting the box out, I mean I never really did much with the makeup. Like I think I just like to look at it, but I just remember getting like really excited about opening the box and then like looking at the makeup, um, not really knowing what to do with it because <laughs> obviously I was like six or seven. And I would say, what is uh, your favourite makeup look? Let me have a look. I would say I'm gonna put a picture here, but this one, the unicorn rainbow one, is my favourite look that I've done in ages because it was just like a, a spur of the moment makeup look it wasn't anything crazy and I think sometimes those are my best looks if I start overthinking it um, they don't go to plan what is your favourite drugstore makeup? well I'll tell you right now I talk about it all the time Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer it's unreal or Maybelline Fit Me Foundation one of these two obsessed why is it taking, and I'll say, this is the third video I've mentioned this month, why is it taking me so long to find Maybelline Fit Me Foundation? I don't know, but these two are amazing. Like, the small one of these, £4, £5.99. You don't have to spend a fortune for good makeup. Okay, um, what is your favourite splurge makeup product? <sighs> Let me have a look. I would say don't have anything like super crazy expensive um splurge hmm 
I would say, it, this is the like one of the more expensive palettes that I own, but it's super old. Again, that kind of goes into that territory of what some of my oldest makeup is. But it's a super, a super, super pill, sugar pill pro palette. And this is the original kind of prototype for this. And this came out in 2012. I got it at IMAX with my friend Karen. Again, another reason why I can't let go. And I literally used Love Plus like literally yesterday. Um, but I absolutely love this palette, as you can see. I've hit pan and a lot of shades. There's a lot of discontinued shades in here, which is another reason why I don't like to, disc uh, to let go of it, because I do like a lot of the shades that are in here that have been discontinued. But this cost me about 120 pounds, maybe, from IMAT. It was definitely over 100 pounds. Um, so I would say that's my most expensive palette. Was it 100 pounds? I don't know now. What is your most re repurchased makeup product? I would probably either say mascara, or foundation over time because you've got to replace it all the time you run out of it really really quickly but i would say recently in the last couple of years it would be the nyx epic ink liner or the kvd trooper tattoo liner i love these brush eyeliners they're the best the only problem is is that the nyx one whilst it is like nine pounds cheaper than i think it's nine pounds yeah around about that price um cheaper than the kvd one is that it bleeds so for example i've got one here and this has still got loads of ink left in it i'm gonna try and see if i can open it i don't think you'll be able to see but it when you go to use it all the ink comes running out is it doing it? Of course it won't do it on camera. And then it just bleeds all over your eyes and it's just so annoying because you could spend like a couple of hours on it, on an eyeshadow look and then it bleeds all over. So that's why I constantly have to replace these because as soon as it starts to do that bleedy thing, I then have to go get a new one. But yeah, really like those, even though it does that, which is really, really annoying. What else have we got? What is your earliest makeup memory? Um, it would be that um i see I, I just share too much i, I, sh I share too much but uh, i would say that the sabrina secrets or the eyeshadow palette from my uh, child minder just kind of being like just all the colors are just something about that i just absolutely love it question 15 is what is your favorite place to shop for makeup i would say if i'm going out to town or if i dare venture over to um Metro Center, I would say something like Boots or Superdrug or Phoenix as well. Like that is because they've got a few more of the bougie counters. And then if I'm online, I would say I've just got into like shopping on Beauty Bay. I do quite like Beauty Bay, and I haven't really tried out any of the other sites like Cult Beauty or anything like that. So if you do know any good places, let me know. But yeah, I, I prefer to shop physically in store because I like the experience of buying things in person. I like to, tr obviously, because COVID likes to ruin everything, but I do like to swatch things. I like to talk to people. Um, although sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating talking to counter staff, but I do like to talk to people about the makeup in person. What is the most underrated makeup product you own? Hmm. Underrated makeup product that I own. I know. I don't have it to hand. I've, I've literally rummaged to the drawers and I can't find it. But I would say anything by Profusion. I think they are kind of poo-pooed a lot by people. And I did. I got that Profusion advent calendar. And the eyeshadows. I've got some of the singles, actually. Their eyeshadow formula is really, really good. And this is like, a, like one of the single shadows. Well, even though there's two of them, but you know what I mean. And they're really, really fantastic. I would Even their lipsticks are quite nice. Comfortable to wear. I would say they do have a little issue with, like, obviously labelling and saying things are matte when they're not matte. But other than that, really, really lovely. Um, and I feel like people don't talk about them enough. And then another one as well is Rude Cosmetics. I love this palette. Just got this maybe, like, yeah, last month. End, end of December, start of January. Absolutely love it. I mean, look at that shade. <laughs> look at that shade. But absolutely really, really fantastic and so cheap and affordable you can get them in super super drug is better than boots for getting these in they have more in stock and i think they do have a website now as well for the uk so those are my top picks for underrated brands and then the next one which we follow up pretty quickly after that as well is what is the most overrated makeup product you own i want to get that straight away i would say it's gonna be maybe the huda mercury retrograde palette this is my first oh covered in horrible makeup this is my first kind of big huda palette i was as soon as she launched it i was so drawn in by the colors you know me gave me anything bright gave me anything shimmery but i will say the mattes gorgeous 
right? But I don't just want it for the mats. I want it for these amazing shimmers. Look at them all. I mean, this one's got a hair on it. I'm gonna take it away. Look at all these gorgeous shimmers. This silver, rubbish. It looks like it's got a shimmer there, but it is chunky. And then when you go and swatch it, like just so lackluster. And I think some of the shades are a little bit hard to work with. All, pretty much all the shimmer shades are. So as a, as a general thing, I'm just really disappointed by this as a, as a, as a palette. So um, I do have the Nude Obsessions in medium and I do like that one. I think, again, it's pigments, but I need to see more. Like if you're gonna charge like 50 odd quid for a palette, it, everything needs to be good. Everything needs to be good. Uh, what is a discontinued makeup product you wish would come back? Oh my God, let me have a think. Mm, okay, I think I know. So the, I wish a lot of Urban Decay's old kind of edgy style was back. So I got this, I'm gonna see if I can put a picture here, this palette, it was from Boots, I got it for my birthday, it came with a little tiny potion primer and it was purple, velvet box with like a metal chain mail style top again i took away i loved this palette so much and it had a bright blue in it it had a bright green in it loads of other shades i pretty much hit pan on every shade bar like the brown shades because i was all about the colors and i kind of wish that the bright individual shades and shadows were back um i missed the kind of fun you know, side, uh, an edgy side of Urban Decay. So for me, I would wish that side, that would kind of come back. If that's, if that's an, sorry, I've got black over my finger. If that's like an acceptable answer to have. Where do you go for makeup inspiration? Um, I just go through Instagram, like, I go a lot through the Explore. I do look on TikTok as well. And I, that's where I see a lot of inspiration. I find a lot of new people. What do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? Drama. Um, in terms of like online, it would I would like to see less of like the dramatic, over the top um, influencers that are out there. It's always the same people. And I just think it's just not about that. It's just makeup, it's supposed to have fun. And I would like to see less brands, oh my God, I would like to see less brands using mink in products and then claiming them to be cruelty free. You can't use an animal fur and then claim it to be cruelty free. You just can't, it's not cruelty free. So you don't need to wear fur on your eyes. You don't need to wear fur at all, but you don't need to wear fur on your eyes to make your eyelashes long. There are plenty of full fur alternatives out there because it's just not needed, if I'm being honest. And then what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? Kind of tail back and on to the, the last one is um, more kind of cruelty free products, more more diversity, more new people, like smaller influencers, smaller faces getting out there. It doesn't matter if you have like 20,000 followers, it doesn't matter if you have, you know, it just, if you like the picture, you should be able to share it on your brand thing. It, it shouldn't be about the clout. I never ever said that word before. I feel a little icky saying that, but just more different faces. Different face, a bit like what um, Teresa said, and probably what the other lady said as well. I haven't watched her video, but I will at the end of this. I feel like I trailed off at the end, but yeah. And yet, that is everything. I haven't numbered all of the the things as I've gone along because I'm a a rubbish lister, it would seem. If you want to do this tag, please answer down below because I'd love to see what you've got. You can do a video or you can leave a comment. That's fine. Uh, for people who I who do do videos, uh, Melody, Caitlin, Lola, I'm gonna tag you all to do this video. I'll leave the questions down below for you to take part in and I hope you, and I'll also leave Teresa and Ali's vid, uh, links to their channel as well. They don't know who I am, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm not expecting them to know who I am. But uh, yeah, I'll leave them down below and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a little thumbs up and if you really, really enjoyed it, you can subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 2,000 subscribers. I am going to be doing a giveaway at 2,000 subscribers. So hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell to be notified of new videos and for when I'm going to do the giveaway as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hello, it's Sarah editing here. Uh, I do believe I forgot question nine, which is what's the worst makeup look you've ever done? So prepare your eyes for these masterpieces yeah they're bad right well uh 
we'll pretend that these don't exist. 